advise the people of the Virgin Islands that in keeping with the Mount Potter administration's commitment on dealing with crime and enforcement in the territory and our advice or our notice last year that we would be emptying the Golden Grove Correctional Facility uh, of inmates. I want to advise the people of the Virgin Islands that this morning and already airborne, 119 convicted inmates at the Golden Grove Correctional Facility is now being transferred to the U.S. mainland uh, to two separate facilities. This will bring our total complement of transferred inmates to the U.S. mainland to approximately 257. Remaining as convicted felons or convicted persons and generally felons in the Golden Grove Correctional Facility within the U.S. Virgin Islands, we now have a census population of only 52 inmates. The Golden Grove Correctional Facility is and the Bureau of Correction is under a 28-year federal consent decree. And part of that problem is severe structural deficiencies within the facility. It is the administration's plan to invest a significant number of dollars, literally demolishing portions of the correctional facility and rebuilding the same. Of the, we currently have on board approximately 133 sworn personnel. If all of our inmates and detainees were hired or housed at Golden Grove, we would have a census population of approximately 476 prisoners and would need an additional 80 correction officers. The people of the Virgin Islands are well aware that part of the administration efforts are to recruit uh, additional correction officers. Director McGrath has been charged and directed with the responsibility of entering into an agreement with the Federal Bureau of Corrections for the purposes of training and professionalizing our correction officer team, our sworn correctional officer uh, team, and the chief negotiator of the government of the Virgin Islands has also been directed to work in tandem with Director McGrath to negotiate a new base pay for correction officers because we simply cannot uh, recruit the adequate quality of candidates at approximately $24,000 per annum. Uh, I know that this may raise some hackles in the community with respect to uh, visitations and family members and what we will be talking about, uh, Director McGrath will talk about at some point uh, there will be some uh, discussion regarding uh, video visitation, but at the end of the day we're talking about persons who have been convicted, some of some serious violent crimes and murder, and our responsibility is the safety and security uh, of the system. Uh, there are problems within the system. We've read it without convicting anyone. We've read of the continuing issues of contraband in Golden Grove, and many folks in this community I believe is convinced that when one is sentenced within the halls or the walls of the Golden Grove Correctional Facility, one can question the quality or lack of quality of time in the penal institution. We are committed to professionalizing the institution and the movement of and continued movement of prisoners and convicted felons out of the territory is the mantra of this administration. I would uh, want to advise the people of the Virgin Islands that they are approximately 167 detainees within the Golden Grove Correctional Facility. In my meeting with the Chief uh, Presiding Judge Michael Dunstan a couple of weeks ago, I discussed with him the aging of that de detainee population. We have prisoners sitting in Golden Grove, some for as high as seven years, waiting for trial five years, three years. Some of these persons are charged with, 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 with aggravated assault, destruction of property, burglaries. Yes, there are one or two that have been charged with murder. But at the end of the day, housing a detainee at a cost of $150 a day at the Bureau of Corrections and waiting as long as seven years and seven months for trial is totally unacceptable. I will accept some level of responsibility as we continue to improve our resources and capacity at the Department of Justice. 
But the reality is, and I discussed this matter with the presiding judge, that the court simply is not moving on its dockets. We have judges who are being paid in the Superior Court who some simply don't even report to work on a regular basis, do not move their court calendar, cannot respond to simple uh, motions, and move the, the administration of justice forward. We have citizens in our community who are filing petitions for mandamus with the Supreme Court and having the, the Supreme Court act on those petitions. And a petition of mandamus is simply nothing more than asking the Supreme Court to order a judge to do their job, to make a decision, to move on a motion, to move a trial forward. The court continues to request additional resources, expansion, I've been asked to relocate the Bureau of Correction and the Virgin Islands Police Department, our facilities, and the government of the Virgin Islands going on St. Thomas to make more room for the court. I am not prepared to support any additional resources to the court if the members of the Superior Court, the judiciary, at that level is not prepared to move the court docket and to make decisions regarding detainees in the territory. I believe it is just an inefficient process to pay to house a detainee at $150 um, a day. Housing a detainee who cannot have access to a trial. Yes, one can ask a pen blame to the councils for some of these defendants, but at the end of the day, if one does a cursory review of the docket of the various judges of the, the Superior Court, one will clearly be able to understand that there are judges who are functioning and moving their calendars, and there are others who are not. This is not acceptable. I've advised the presiding judge, because a speedy trial provisions of federal law does not apply to the U.S. Virgin Islands, that I will be forwarding a bill to the legislature appending a speedy trial provisions and applicable to persons arrested in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And my friends, we must understand the, the, the reaction and the reality of a non-moving judicial branch of government. On the criminal side, it's really very expensive for you, the taxpayer, and the executive branch of government. But think in the economy side, in the civil side, with contracts disputes, with uh, uh, persons who are tenant landlord relationships. If the court isn't moving, these disputes cannot be resolved. If persons are suing from a civil perspective for damages against them or their businesses, or customers are suing businesses or other persons for what they believe are legitimate damages to them, and the court simply does not move, this becomes a very expensive process to the economy. You will see the cost of that, particularly in your insurance rates, because it becomes a very lethargic system of resolving general disputes within the society.